Hydra is a genus of small, freshwater organisms of the phylum Cnidaria and class Hydrozoa. Biologists are especially interested in Hydra because of their regenerative ability, they do not appear to die of old age, or indeed to age at all. Hydra has a tubular, radially symmetric body up to 10 mm, 0.39 in, long when extended, secured by a simple adhesive foot called the basal disc gland cells in the basal disc secrete a sticky fluid that accounts for its adhesive properties. At the free end of the body is a mouth opening surrounded by 1 to 12 thin, mobile tentacles. Each tentacle, or knida, plural, knidi, is clothed with highly specialized stinging cells called knidocytes. Knidocytes contain specialized structures called nematocysts, which look like miniature light bulbs with a coiled thread inside. At the narrow outer edge of the knidocyte is a short trigger hair called a knidocyte. Upon contact with prey, the contents of the nematocyst are explosively discharged, firing a dart-like thread containing neurotoxins into whatever triggered the release. This can paralyze the prey, especially if many hundreds of nematocysts are fired. Hydra has two main body layers, which makes it diploblastic. The layers are separated by mesoglea, a gel-like substance. The outer layer is the epidermis, and the inner layer is called the gastrodermis, because it lines the stomach. Hydras have two significant structures on their body, the head and the foot. Hydra does not have a recognizable brain or true muscles. The outer layer is the epidermis, and the inner layer is called the gastrodermis, because it lines the stomach. Hydra are generally sedentary or sessile but do occasionally move quite readily, especially when hunting. Hydra mainly feed on aquatic invertebrates such as Daphnia and Cyclops. When food is plentiful, many Hydra reproduce asexually by producing buds in the body wall, which grow to be miniature adults and break away when they are mature. While Hydra immortality is well supported today, the implications for human aging are still controversial. There is much optimism, however, it appears that researchers still have a long way to go before they are able to understand how the results of their work might apply to the reduction or elimination of human senescence.